Now these are two batteries that I use to store energy from my solar panels and my wind turbine. And as you might notice, these batteries are not the same. One of them is significantly bigger than the other one. Generally speaking, mixing different batteries like that is not recommended because if you get it wrong, it can lead to poor performance, dead batteries, and worst case, even fires or explosions. But if you get it right, it can save a lot of money and prevent unnecessary waste because you might be able to use batteries you already have laying around instead of buying new ones. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at what you can and cannot do when it comes to combining different batteries in one pack. So first of all, you have to make sure that all the batteries that you're going to use are the same chemistry type. So they all have to be either lithium ion or lead acid or nickel cadmium or whatever they might be. Uh, but no mixing of different types of chemistry. So don't make a battery pack with lithium ion and lead acid batteries combined together. That's not going to end well. So make sure they all use the same chemistry. Now then, if they are all the same chemistry, the next question is how can you wire them up? Well, of course, there are two ways that you can connect batteries to each other. You can wire them up in parallel, which is where you connect their positives and negatives together or you can wire them up in series, which is where you connect the positive end of one battery to the negative end of the other one and leave the other two ends open. Now, if you're going to connect batteries in parallel, you need to make absolutely sure that they have the same exact voltage, because if they don't, the higher voltage battery is gonna charge the lower voltage battery in a very fast and uncontrolled way which is likely going to destroy both of your batteries. In worst case, this could lead to an actual fire. Even if your batteries have the same nominal voltage, so let's say they're both 12 volt lead acid batteries, of course their actual voltage can still be a little bit different depending on the state of charge of the batteries. So you also want to make sure that both batteries are equalized in terms of voltage as close as you can get it before you connect them to each other. But then what about connecting batteries together with different capacities? So let's say we have a 5 amp power battery and a 10 amp power battery and we want to connect them in parallel. This is actually no problem at all. The, the capacity will simply add up. So we'll just get the combined capacity of both batteries. And this is actually what I'm doing uh, with my setup as well. I've got one uh, 100 amp power battery and then a smaller 45 amp power battery and they're connected in parallel to give me a 145 amp power battery. It's as simple as that. It's really like having uh, two water reservoirs right next to each other with different sizes that are connected to one single valve at the bottom. When you fill them up, they will fill up together and when you empty them, they will also empty together. And the level in those, uh, in those tanks will always be exactly the same, similar to how the voltage on the batteries will always be exactly the same because they're connected in parallel. Right, so then what about connecting batteries in series? Well, if you're going to connect batteries in series, different voltages aren't a big deal because the batteries are now wired up in such a way that they cannot possibly uh, charge each other. So I can have a 12 volt battery and connect a 6 volt battery to it in series. I simply end up with an 18 volt battery. That's no big deal at all. So in this case, different voltages are fine. In this case, however, the capacity of the batteries has to be exactly the same because this is not a self-balancing configuration like the parallel setup. So what you can have in this case is that one battery runs out before the other one does. So let's say that I have a 10 amp hour battery and a 5 amp hour battery connected in series and I start drawing 5 amps of current. Now that means after one hour the 5 amp hour battery will be empty but the 10 amp hour battery won't be empty. Now if I keep drawing current I end up destroying that smaller 5 amp hour battery. The same thing goes when I charge the battery pack. If I start charging this battery pack, the smaller battery will be fully charged first, but the bigger one won't be full yet. So the charger keeps going and will end up overcharging that smaller battery. So if you're connecting batteries in series, you need to make sure they have the same exact capacity. So to summarize, this matrix tells you what you can and cannot get away with 
when you're combining different batteries. So if you're connecting batteries in parallel, they have to be exactly the same voltage, but they can have different capacities. If you're connecting batteries in series, they can have different voltages, but they need to have exactly the same capacity. So finally, if you have lots of batteries, you can obviously also decide to make a combination of series and parallel connections. So for instance, you can connect batteries in parallel and then connect those groups in series. Or you can connect batteries in series and connect those groups in parallel. In that case, the same rules still apply. So if you're going to connect parallel groups in series, those groups need to have the same capacity. If you're going to connect series groups in parallel, those groups need to have the same voltage. So now this doesn't just apply to your individual batteries within one group, but it also applies to those groups once you're going to connect them to each other. Right, so I think that's about everything I wanted to say for this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and of course, thank you for watching.